My name is Vuk Marevich. Uh, good afternoon. I am associate professor at Mississippi State University. And today I'm going to talk about open source software radio platform that we built for enabling ORAN research, prototyping, and testing. Our mission is to provide an open platform for prototyping and testing artificial intelligence based radio access network controllers. So it's about cellular network. In the context of cellular networks, we want to develop AI-based controllers for next-generation networks. These are my collaborators, professors at Mississippi State University, George Mason, and Virginia Tech. And just briefly, the outline, I will provide you the necessary background on ORAN to be able to follow this talk. Then I'll present our project called Open AI Cellular, some software development and a sample project and conclusions. So in terms of background, uh, we're moving away from the traditional base stations that were monolithic. Everything was integrated on a cell tower. <clears throat> you had antennas on top. You had the cabinet on the bottom, right? And everything was uh, local and proprietary. We're moving towards a bit more software-defined network where the cell towers could be in one spot. I mean, yeah, and the, with antennas, and the signal processing can be somewhere else. This means uh, RAN disaggregation. We're moving towards more flexible and programmable networks with open interfaces that make them programmable and flexible. So <clears throat> let me talk briefly about RAN disaggregation. RAN stands for Radio Access Network. So uh, the idea is to have the different parts of, of, a, of a base station disaggregated. You have the RF part. You have some lower layer, physical layer processing. You have MAC layer. You have other layers. And those can now be disaggregated across sites, locations, right? And the way it works is uh, they define, we define the radio unit, which has the RF front end, essentially, and can have some physical air processing. Um, we have the distributed unit, which can be somewhere, someplace else, at the edge, for example. And we have the control unit that does higher layer control. This can be at, at regional servers or even in the cloud. The third generation partnership project, who standardizes all cellular network generations, offers us eight options to split our base station. And so vendors can decide what they want to use. But ORAN specifically, uh, ORAN stands for Open RAN and is standardized by the Open ORAN Alliance. They specifically use specific splits, uh, the 7.2x split, which they call Open Front Hall. So they have a little bit of file layer processing with the RF part, and the rest is in a uh, distributed unit. And then they use the F1, uh, the option two for the F1 interface between the distributed unit and the control unit. Beyond RAN disaggregation, what does ORAN offer? ORAN obviously leverages the 3GPP protocols, but adds new features to it. Uh, the big features I want to talk about today are the RAN Intelligent Controllers, or RICs. There are two of them. One is called the non-real-time RIC. Uh, it is up there in the... Um, anyway. Sorry. It's up there in the service management orchestration part. It operates on, uh, on data that is slowly processed and... and uh, and feedback that is given at one second or above. So the non-real-time rig features the R apps. So an R app is a microservice that actually implements some control algorithm to manage the network, right? To optimize the network, right? At, at slow time scales. Another big block is the near real-time rig, which operates at time scales between 10 milliseconds and one second. So near real time. And uh, Applications that control that can control your network or the users or the services are called the X apps. And then uh, these new feed, these new RAN intelligent controllers control the RAN, which is disaggregated. You can see it here through open interfaces. The idea is that uh, there are some interfaces that are standardized by 3GPP and some interfaces that are new to ORAN. The E2 interface is for ORAN management between the near real-time rig, and the radio access network. So the X apps and R apps that I mentioned before, 
they can apply artificial intelligence to control the RAN. They don't have to, but this is an inbuilt option of ORAN. So how does, uh, does it work? So you collect the context data, for example, from the RAN, from Radio Access Network, you get the key performance indicators. You collect those, put them in a database, or you use that, all the data to model your training, a training model uh, of your AI. And this happens in non-real-time rig. This happens non-real-time and can happen offline. And then once the model is trained, you can uh, adapt or, or control the network through the R apps or X apps. So that was the background on ORAN. Let me talk about our project called Open, Air, Open Artificial Intelligence Cellular. This is what we want to accomplish. We want to use software radios. We want to use open source software that implements the RAN, 4G, 5G, and who knows, next G, right? And we want to integrate the ORAN framework around it so we can have non-real-time control and near-real-time control and possibly real-time control of our RAN employing artificial intelligence. So we use standard open source software, we use Ethos Research USRPs, and we use, we leverage the ORAN Alliance specifications to do it right and compatible with others. Another part of the project is a testing framework. We call it OIICT. It's, it's also based on AI. So the idea is you, if you have these intelligent RANs where you have AI to control the RAN, to control the scheduling, control the admission of users, uh, do traffic steering, handover, and whatnot. So these networks, the next generation networks, need to be tested properly, right, against all sorts of signals. So we have this framework that we're developing to generate test signals, test scripts, and test signals to test the network. So if you develop a new X app that is based on AI or not, you can run our AI testing framework to verify it, it works in different conditions. And we also want to apply AI to the testing to learn about what signals to generate in order to test the performance of the network. And finally, uh, the, the project itself is software-based, but we want to deploy it on real hardware, right? I, I mentioned USRPs. So uh, we want to enable deployment on, on, on small test beds in your lab or on big test beds like Virginia Tech's Cornet or platforms for advanced wireless research, the power platforms. So what we've done so far is we released our first code release. Um, you see the GitHub. It's all on GitHub. It's all free and available. It's based on 5G NSA networks with our ORAN interfaces. And you can, you can use it with SDRs, with USRPs, or you can use it with ZMQ, with virtual radios. And along with our code, we also uh, release documentation and also some videos to help you install and, and use our software. Okay, let me talk a little bit about the software development itself a little bit more technical. So what is essential for developing an ORAN system? Well, I, I, I told you before, there are certain blocks that are new, that is the non-real-time rig and the near real-time rig, right? And there are new interfaces that need to be established for the non-real-time rig, in this case, to talk to the RAN, to get the parameters from the RAN and to send configuration commands to the RAN. For example, admit this user associated with this cell or that cell, right? So how we did it is we looked at the specifications, the ORAN uh, Alliance. They, they standardized the uh, ORAN protocol and the interfaces. So we looked at the interface specifications, copied what we need, compiled it with the ASN1 compiler for C, and then we can use, then we can generate E2 messages to communicate with, between the near real-time rig and the RAN. And these, two, these E2 messages need to uh, follow a certain format. It's all standardized or specified by the ORAN Alliance. There are IDs that need to be associated. There need to be <coughs> nodes defined, etc., so that we can verify if this RAN belongs to the network or not and enable certain services. To give you an example, so once we have been able to identify what we need from a standard, compile it, now we have a near real-time rig on the left side 
that has this E2 termination that receives E2 messages and E2 manager that manages it. And the right side, we implemented the E2 agent. This is an endpoint that interacts with the RAN. So the communication goes between these two E2 uh, endpoints, right? And then through that, we can access the RAN for getting parameters or for configuring the RAN to do something. So on the left side, again, you have the XAP development and execution environment. On the right side, you have the E2 agent that interfaces with the software radius. Now that we have the E2 interface, with, with this, which is essential for doing in real time rig to run control, we can develop X apps, or we can integrate existing X app. So industry has been working ORAN for a while now and offers a lot of X apps already that we have integrated in our system. And they come from the ORAN software community, which is a consortium built of industry members, similar to 3GPP. And we also have from other co uh, contributors, for example, from Powder, Testbed, we use the next, next RAN, RAN slicing app. What we're doing now, we're developing our own X apps. One is Age of Information Based Scheduler, another enhanced AI Enhanced Scheduler, and many other X apps that we want to develop because our project is about AI control of next generation networks. And looking beyond X apps, so X apps is quite popular, right? But looking beyond X app, what we are interested in, and, and some, some of you may also be, is on AI control of the physical layer, or lower layers, right? For that, you need a, a faster cycle of control. So this is something that's currently not supported by ORAN, but we want to look into that and investigate. And of course, the R apps, I mentioned them before, those are the microservices that control the, the RAN at lower, uh, slower time scales. For example, set new policies or optimize uh, sectors and whatnot. So how, this is a community project. We want to make it easy for community to use it and to contribute to it, right? So we provide all our source code open and for free, for free download from a GitHub. We also want to make deployment easy, which is what, and, uh, for, for you, so you can download, the goal is to, you can download a virtual machine that has all the software integrated, all dependencies met, so you can run this open AI cellular network on your own computer, if you have software radius, you can set up your own testbed. And finally, the deployment uses the typical tools that we have, like a Git pull request, right? A forking and committing and, and so forth, everything that you're used to. So for the reminder, let me talk about uh, a recent project for XApp development. So what we're doing, what a student is doing, uh, he's developing an X app that does the user scheduling, user admission to a base station and scheduling. So what we have, as I showed you before, we have the RAN, the radio access network on one side with the E2, uh, with the E2 interface, and the other side we have the near real-time rig, which manages the E2 messages. So the near real-time rig also offers databases to store the data that you receive from the RAN. It has an X app that's called KPI Mon. This is developer industry that we use to collect the key performance indicators from the RAN and store them in a database. And then the X app that we want to develop is on the top that uses the data from the, from the RAN, processes it, and makes decisions on which users to admit to what cell and, and what how many resources to allocate to them. So for the, for the scheduling, XAP, we use reinforcement learning. You, have, you develop an agent that, that determines some actions to uh, maximize the reward and does this through observations from the environment. Okay, and uh, to not spend much time, you can, there's a paper you can read about the details, but the idea is to for the RAN, which consists of multiple base stations, to allocate users, to associate users to certain base stations and give them as much throughput as possible. So here's an example uh, of the results that we have. Instead of using a real-time uh, system, we use the RAN simulator. We use some available RAN simulator 
and connected it to our near real-time rig to develop the X app. And you can see here what we did. So we, we set up five base stations, we set up 10 users, and, and this RAN simulator provides the mobility model of the users. So what we do is, what the XAP does, right, is based on the KPIs that it receives, the channel state and, the, uh, and other things that it receives from the, from the UEs, then the base stations forward this to the XAP, and the XAP makes decisions which UEs to associate to which base station, how much bandwidth to allocate to them. What you see here is two snapshots, right? On the left is after some, after a while, after 10 time slots, and the right is after 20 time slots. You see the user mobility here. So after we developed the X app properly in its environment of the near real-time rig, now we need to execute it in the proper real-time environment, right? So for that, we use the modified version of SRS RAN with the E2 termination and some modules uh, change so that it takes actually the actions from the X app and changes its scheduling decisions. So you can see we can simulate one, for example, one base station, multiple users, and we can use SDRs for that, so SDR hardware. Uh, we can also offer the use of virtual radios through ZMQ. So in this case, there's no SDR hardware involved, but still the real-time system. And we can use GNU radio to generate a flow graph to connect the UEs to the base station properly. So this is our scheduling project. Now, more use cases for GNU Radio, as we see. Um, of course, GNU Radio is a fantastic tool for quick, quick prototyping and testing with SDRs. For our project, what we envision is to collect IQ samples, for example, for AI model training and testing. Uh, we also want to use GNU Radio to create a variety of RF signaling environments. Let's assume future next generation networks, right? will not necessarily operate in licensed spectrum, right? They may operate unlicensed or shared spectrum. So we can create some of the, uh, using sim easily GNU radio to create some signals of other users that need to coexist in this band. And then let's see how the X app or how the RAN adapts to that. We can also do interference, uh, create interference and do some security research, et cetera. And what I said, we also want to explore AI-enhanced physical layer modules in the context of ORAN, and we can prototype this with GNU Radio. Okay, I would like to conclude with this slide and ask you uh, for your feedback or ask you for your research interests, and so we can work on, the, on these together and solve them together. Just to point you, we have a repository that's open and free. We have an email, and you can contact anyone else, and we have a website uh, that has a user survey. You can participate if you like, uh, all links that you need to see what we have developed. And this is a project that just started, so we'll be doing this for another two or three years or more to get more features in and hopefully get engaged the community and work with you on that. That's all I have. Thank you. Do we have any? Ah, yes, we do have questions from the room. How does this impact latency? Uh, good question. Um, latency sensitive applications are not yet uh, supported by ORAN. You've seen the, it's above 10 milliseconds, right? So what you can do with X apps is you can do decisions that go in time frames of 10, 10 millis with 10 millisecond delay, right? We haven't tested it, but I've seen some people looking at how quickly all the software go works together and how quickly the data is moved. Um, that's one aspect of latency. Another aspect of latency is the actual RAN disaggregation, right? So it's to be seen. Uh, 3GPP offers it. Industry seems to be picking up on it, but it's to be seen what gets disaggregated and how and, and how far away. Like with, you know, remember Cloud RAN, right? So how much gets actually in the cloud in the cloud ran and how much gets local. It remains to be seen. There is latency concerns, and that, that's also how you make a decision which split you want to choose for your system or application. Thank you. One more question from the room. Yes. 
Hello, many thanks. Um, first of all, what uh, RAN emulator you use? Sorry, what? what? For the um, one of your experiments, right? Uh, what RAN, RAN emulator did you use? I forgot. It's some something that I need to look it up. I'm so sorry. Okay. It's a uh, simulator. It's a commercial sim. I mean, commercial simulator that allows you to simulate ten or more UEs and so forth. Okay. Uh, the second thing, so GNU Radio has a it, it's very reconfigurable, versatile, whatnot, has a bunch of um, ways you can reconfigure variables and parameters on the fly, right, over remote procedure calls and et cetera. Um, based on that, do you think there's any way or there be any benefit from exposed this control over GNU Radio using service models in the Orion ecosystem? Well, dynamic things you need to pick up early, right? You can directly process the physical layer, let's say modulation and coding scheme, right? You change that to a physical layer. But I see this more as a powerful tool for long-term um, optimization or near real time, as, as I said, right? And for the, for the variables that change very quickly need to be, let's say, retransmissions. Decision need to be made quickly, right? To make, make it in time. This is what we need to explore still and we want to explore to see if this is possible to use an AI model, train it properly and, and robustly to operate at this, these time scales. One more question from the room. Hello. Uh, you mentioned that you were trying to expand the physical layer uh, access and that that wasn't currently supported by the ORAN framework. I was wondering how you were developing X apps uh, that get access to that raw IQ data. Great question. So. We won't use X apps. What we want to do is, or what people are, are, not just us, but people are thinking about implementing the AI as part of the distributed units, not within the near real time rig. The near real time rig can control like hundreds or, or of base stations, right? And thousands of users. But where the physically a real time control might need to be, need to happen is closer to the physical layer, obviously, closer to the, let's say, antennas, I think it should happen probably co-located with the D DUs, the distributed units, right, where the physical layer is implemented. So it wouldn't be X apps. People call them D apps or another name, right? So how do you actually get, uh, like, if it's not supported by ORAN, how are you actually getting access, though, to that? That IQ. Well, for us, it's easy because we use open source software. Ah, okay. So, so everything you're just is, rewriting the full the... stream is open source, SRS, OAI, whatever you like. And everything is in software. You just plug up the, plug in the USRP. Everything is in open software. Okay. So you're, you're rewriting those, those ORAN modules. So yeah, we will, can... we will work on open source project. But for industry, it depends. Like, I think what, what someone envisions is that the RU will be the hardware, right? And it can be multiple vendors, not just a single or a few. And then everything, the rest will be implemented in software, proprietary or open. We'll see. Cool. Thank you very much. Thank you.